All right, so what I have here is an argument. We're going to construct a truth table to determine whether or not this argument is valid. So the first thing to do is to construct our truth table. And as you see, what I've done here is I've constructed the reference columns, P and Q, here. And then what I've done is I've put into a separate column each of the premises. So here's the first premise. Here's the second premise, which is just the reference column Q repeated. And here is the conclusion, not P. So the first step in constructing your truth table is to assign the truth values to the reference columns. So to do that, I'm going to follow this pattern, true, false, true, false, and true, true, false, false. So what I've done here is I've captured every possible uh, uh, combination of truth values uh, for there being two different basic propositions. So either they can both be true, they can both be false, right, or the combinations in between. Uh, what's important again here is that I've, I've captured every logical possibility. And I ask you to kind of follow this pattern because it's easy for me to grade your truth tables on the exam, for example, if everyone is following the same pattern. Uh, but again, this, this isn't like the only way to do it. It's just what I'm suggesting you do to make it easier for me to grade. Okay, so first step after we've constructed our reference columns is to assign the truth values to the premises. Uh, we're not, sorry, we're not assigning. We're going to determine the truth values of the premises and the conclusion. Um, and this, of course, requires that you know uh, how to uh, figure out the truth values for the propositional operators. So here is a disjunction, so P or Q. So a disjunction is true in any case except where both disjuncts are false. So if we have at least one true between the P and the Q, then the disjunction is true, and otherwise it's false. So here there's only one row where the disjunction is false, where they're, both disjuncts are false. Q um, is one of our premises, but it's also one of our basic propositions that I've assigned over here. So all I'm going to do here is just repeat Q, true, false, true, false, and negation P, tilde P, we're just going to flip the truth values that we've assigned to P over here. So that looks like this, false, false, true, true. All right, at this point we have completed our truth table. Now the task is to uh, use our understanding of, of validity to determine whether or not this argument is valid. So what we're looking for is a row where all of the premises are true. In this case, there are only two premises. But we're looking for a row where both premises are true and yet the conclusion is false. And if we look we see, of course, the very first, uh, I can't highlight this, um, the very first, there it is, the very first row that occurs, right? So both premises are true, and yet the conclusion is false. So we can stop right there. Uh, we don't even have to look any further down the truth table because uh, here is a, circumstance where both premises are true and the conclusion is false, and that means the argument is invalid. Right? Again, this is trying to capture our intuitive notion of validity according to which an argument is uh, invalid if it's possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. Right? Another way we said that was um, uh, on the assumption of the truth of the premises it's impossible for the conclusion to be false. But essentially what we've shown here in this truth table is that it's not impossible for the conclusion to be false, right? Here you've got both the premises true and yet the conclusion is false. That This row presents a possibility where the premises are true and the conclusion is false. And that means the argument is invalid.